Supreme Master Ching Ai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. El episodio de hoy será presentado en inglés con subtítulo en árabe, aula sense, también conocido como vietnamita, búlgaro, chino, croata, checo, inglés, francés, alemán, hindi, húngaro, indonesio, italiano, japonés, coreano, malayo, mongol, persa, polaco, portugués, punjabi, rumano, español y tailandés. Hola, amorosos televidentes, mi nombre es Magdalena de Santiago de Chile. Chile, en palabras del ganador del premio Nobel chileno, Pablo Neruda, fue inventado por un poeta. Este hermoso país se encuentra a lo largo de la costa occidental de América del Sur. Muy parecido a una cinta estrecha en apariencia, se extiende entre el océano más profundo, el océano Pacífico, y la cadena montañosa más extensa, los majestuosos Andes. Su impresionante paisaje contrastante y su profundo patrimonio cultural han convertido esta tierra en un destino único para visitantes de todo el mundo. Nuestra gente desea que sus días sean llenados de amor incondicional y paz duradera. Ahora disfrutemos del programa de hoy titulado La Maestra Cuenta Chistes e Historias Budistas, un monje llamado Joyas Celestiales, parte 1 de 2. Más idiomas están disponibles en línea. Para su idioma específico, por favor visite www.suprimmastertv.com barra subtitles. Durante más de tres décadas, la Maestra Suprema Ching Kai ha iluminado nuestro mundo con sus enseñanzas divinas. Una maestra totalmente iluminada imparte el método Wang Yin de meditación a aquellos que desean descubrir inmediatamente la naturaleza de Dios interna y alcanzar en una vida la liberación eterna del ciclo de la transmigración. El método Wang Yin ha sido practicado por todos los maestros iluminados, tales como Buda, Jesucristo, el profeta Mahoma, la paz sea con él y Guru Nanak. Ella enfatiza que si siempre recordamos a Dios, ofrecemos servicio desinteresado a otros y seguimos las leyes del universo, alcanzaremos nuestro potencial más elevado como humanos y comprenderemos verdaderamente nuestro propósito en la tierra. La Maestra Suprema Ching Hai es un extraordinario ejemplo viviente de compasión, enviando frecuentemente asistencia material y financiera, además de amor, a los refugiados, los desamparados, las víctimas de desastres naturales y a otros que necesitan ayuda. En el 2006 recibió el Premio Gusi de la Paz, considerado el Premio Nobel de la Paz de Oriente y ha sido honrada a través de los años con otros numerosos premios y galardones por sus excepcionales obras filantrópicas y humanitarias. Una verdadera voz para nuestros preciosos amigos animales. Ella promueve la pacífica y amorosa dieta a base de plantas y prevé con el despertar de la humanidad hacia lo sagrado de todas las vidas, un tranquilo y glorioso mundo, 
completamente vegano, donde los animales y las personas viven en dichosa armonía. Sus iniciativas para difundir la tendencia vegana son diversas y han incluido la distribución del volante de vida alternativa, la cadena internacional de restaurantes veganos, Living Food, su Master Television, además de hablar regularmente con influyentes líderes de gobierno y medios de comunicación y participar en conferencias televisadas sobre el cambio climático, tanto si somos conscientes de ello como si no. Sus esfuerzos han tenido una enorme influencia sobre la conciencia mundial del estilo de vida amigable con los animales y de cómo esta benévola forma de ser puede traer paz duradera entre las naciones a la vez que salvamos nuestro planeta del cambio climático. A lo largo de los años, la Maestra Suprema Jinhai ha viajado por todo el mundo, desde las Américas hasta África, desde Europa hasta Oceanía, y ofrecido cientos de discursos al público y a sus discípulos sobre una variedad de temas espirituales. Hoy somos bendecidos con la presentación de una de estas reveladoras conferencias titulada La Maestra Cuenta Chistes e Historias Budistas, un monje llamado Joyas Celestiales parte 1 de 2 en Entre Maestro y Discípulos dada en inglés el 29 de agosto del 2015 en Francia. I was thinking, uh, you, <laughs> uh, how many people left today? Huh? How many people left? Don't know? Shall we? No one left? How come it looks so empty over there? <laughs> Is not? Okay. Something wrong with me? Yeah. Oh, it's funny. Oh, just one second, okay? Before I put on Oh, it's all about dogs, huh? Mm -hmm. Don't forget it. <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking it's in uh, Sutra, but it's not. Excuse me, what? Okay. Uh, there's one guy here, he's left. Oh, he's there. Every day I'm checking who, who is not there. <laughs> This is for you. I don't have something for you today. Only two guys and you didn't have. Just some symbol of love, okay? Not the same, of course. Vietnamese? Uh, uh, Taiwan. Taiwan. Uh, uh, Korea? <laughs> Japan? <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Any problem today? No. Always say no. No problem is the best problem. Hmm? <laughs> How are you? Everybody good? Yes. Feeling happy? Yes. Everybody use it? Yes. Is it more convenient? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> you need your mama. <laughs> It's very simple. Why nobody think about that? Why everybody? Just one person think all the time. Here is not fair. The system is bad. Hmm? One person have to think all the time. One person has to do shopping all the time. And one person has to deal with the government all the time. I mean, deal with the paperwork. It's not fair, what you say. Hmm? Is it fair? No. no. What shall we do about it? Hmm? We make them work. They're sitting doing nothing all day. <laughs> you cook twice a day, right? Still? How come I have only once a day food? <laughs> is it one meal or is it two meals together? 
Dot dot. <laughs> point point. Yeah, two point. <laughs> oh dear God, it's the it's the tribes that settle there, my Lord. The suburban the suburbanites. They started calling your flowers weeds, and went to great lengths to kill them and replace them with grass. Yeah. I tell you my story later. If you remind me, okay? Yeah. Ah, so God, two point <laughs> grass, but it's so boring. God said, yeah, it's not so colorful, right? Not, yeah. It doesn't attract butterflies, birds, and bees. Only grubs and sad worms. It's temperamental with temperatures. Do these suburbanites really want all that grass growing there? So San Francisco, oink, oink. <laughs> apparently so, my lord. They go to great pains to grow it and keep it green. They begin each spring by fertilizing grass and poisoning any other plant that crops up in the lawn. That's correct, right? Yeah. That's what most people do. Yeah. God, point, point. The spring rains and warm weather probably make grass grow really fast. So that must make the suburbanites happy, huh? Eh? God asked. So San Francisco, point, point. Apparently not, Lord. As soon as it grows a little, they cut it. <laughs> Sometimes even twice a week. That is all true. Yeah, I always wonder what the humans are doing all the time. <laughs> so God, point, point, yeah, two point. <laughs> they cut it. Do they then bury it like hay? You know, tie it together. You know. Or roll it, you know, like the hay after harvest. San Francisco, point, point. Not exactly, Lord. Most of them rake it up and put it in bags. God, point, point. They bag it? <laughs> Why? Why do they bag them? Is it a cr cash crop? Do they sell it? <laughs> Cha, poor God. <laughs> This is all very strange to him. San Francisco, point, point. Mm. No, sir, no, sir. Just the opposite. They pay to throw it away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> more money, more work. <laughs> so God, point, point. Mm. Now let me get this straight. <sighs> He, God is lost. <laughs> God could not understand humans. <laughs> so He said, Now let me get this straight. They fertilize grass so it will grow, <laughs> correct? Yeah. And then when it does grow, they cut it off, <laughs> correct? And even pay to throw it away? <laughs> San Francis, oink, oink. Yes, sir. God, oink, oink. These suburbanites must be relieved in summer when we cut back on the rain and turn up the heat. That surely slows the growth and saves them a lot of work, no? So God is very, very compromising. <laughs> Whatever, they have it, okay, you see? He just didn't understand, but it's okay then. In that case, in summer, they must be very happy. They don't have to cut them, you know, don't have to pay to take it away, uh, etc. San Francis answer. Boing, boing. You aren't going to believe this, my Lord. When the grass stops growing so fast, they drag out hoses and pay more money for the water, <laughs> so they can, <laughs> so they can water it, so they can continue to mow it, mow it, and pay to get rid of it, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> God, boing boing, what nonsense! <laughs> At least they kept some of the trees. That was a sheer stroke of genius, if I do say it to myself, meaning he created trees, and it was very good, and he's proud of himself. The trees grow leaves in the spring to provide beauty and shade in the summer. 
in the autumn they fall to the ground and form a natural blanket to keep moisture in the soil and protect the trees and bushes. Plus, as they rot, the leaves form compost to enhance the soil. It's a natural circle of life. San Francis, point, point. You better sit down, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have some news for God. <laughs> that God bears it. <laughs> oh, poor God, we are so sorry, my Lord. <laughs> we ignore him. We're so sorry. <laughs> okay, the suburbanites have drawn a new circle. As soon as the leaves fall, they rake them into great piles and pay to have them hauled away too. How hauled away? Right? Yeah, haul away. Haul, 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 haul away. Yes. God. Point, point. No. <laughs> What do they do to protect the shrub and the roots in the winter and to keep the soil moist and loose? Because they wreck all the leaves away. So, what happened, huh? San Francis. Point, point. After throwing away the leaves, they go out and buy something which they call. Mulch. <laughs> they haul it home and spread it around in place of the leaves. More money, more work. Oh, <laughs> God! Point, point. And where do they get this mulch? Oh, San Francis. Point, point. They cut down the trees and grind them up to make the mulch, dear Lord. God. Point, point. Okay, enough. I don't want to think about this anymore. Saint Catherine, you are in charge of the arts. What movie have they scheduled for us tonight? God wants to relax now. <laughs> It's too much for him. He must watch the movies, you know, to detend, to relax. So Saint Catherine, point point. The film tonight is called Dump. And Dumba, <laughs> dear Lord, it's a really stupid movie about boing 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 boing. God, oh, never mind. I I think I just heard the whole story from San Francisco already. <laughs> <laughs> Poor God, can't can't even watch a movie. <laughs> even it's too much. <laughs> yeah. You like the story? Yes. Okay, that's it, huh? What else? <laughs> you just sit there. <laughs> ah, the story. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, my story is similar, except that I wasn't God, <laughs> and I wasn't talking to San Francis, but some of the she who. Uh, Santos or uh, Santas, yes. In the former day, former days, I had no, no house, not even cave. I just have a tent. And we all had tents, yeah. And then we uh, just put up a tent on top of maybe a, a platform of wood or some something, uh, bamboos, or just on the ground. It depends on what kind of ground. So uh, in the beginning, we we. I told you already, you know, the disciple keep growing. They chase me up from all the way down, up to the, <laughs> from the mango tree up all the way to the bamboo grove, and then to the uh, uh, international garden, and then later to the uh, uh, persimmon persimmon garden. Yeah, and then all the, and later they chase me all the way up further. <laughs> we get another. We bought another piece of land. And they call it. Uh, I forgot. There's a white, white flower everywhere. I forgot. Huh? By Hualien, I know English. There's a white flowers everywhere. I, I, I forgot the name. Huh? Not Daisy. Daisy is like this. Not on the tree. No, 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 no. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, I painted some pic a picture with some trees of that type. Yeah. Okay. 
they use it nowadays to do some of the uh, um, biofuel. No? I, they use the the, the, the the fruit of that tree. Never mind. Okay, the white flower garden, we just say that, okay? They chased me all the way up there. Mm. And uh, in the beginning, I was a little lower on the, on the garden. It's a garden, but it's also sloppy, you know, like all the, most of the places in Sihu. Mm, in the beginning, we had only a few chickens over there, because the chicken from the ex-owner, farmer, you know, later we bought it. Yeah, it is private ground, a very small area up. Now that they make a uh, treasure pavilion and all that, yeah, and my cave behind that, okay. Beginning I was a little lower flat, and then they changed me up again to a little bit higher. And then I put up the tent uh, where it's a little bit slanted down like that, uh, almost near near the where the cave is. On the if from outside looking in, then it's on the left side of the cave at that time. At that time, it's uh, also slanted down like this. And then many weeds are growing beautifully together with trees. It's just a perfect picture. Mm. I love it so much. Yeah. When I sit in a tent, I look how all these uh, natural uh, uh, weeds, and they grow not too, too big. You know, they don't obstruct my view. The trees grow big, yes, but the weeds and all that, just slow, uh, very low. Yeah, and some flowers, some not. But it's just the way it is, it was, it's so perfect. I loved it so much. But I made a mistake. <laughs> when I talked to the resident, I said, Oh, I love my place, you know, all these weeds growing in front of my tent. It's beautiful. Whenever I came back from lecture or something, I said, They have you so nice, so relaxed, right in front of my tent. The things grow naturally, beautiful. Okay, they take notes. They took note of that. The next next lecture tour, I went. <laughs> some weeks, some months, or something later, I came back. No more weeds, nothing. They make it all flat. They dig the ground. They plant grass. Planted grass. Oh, I was beside myself with. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, right? With a tiger face. <laughs> oh, I cannot bear it. But what to do? It's too late. They destroy it already. You know, they dig the ground, make it flat here, flat there, and a tear like that. Originally, it was just sloping gently, you know? And all the, the, the weeds, even it doesn't flower, but the, the way it's arranged is so beautiful. I can't describe it to you. It's just beautiful. Naturally and beautiful. It's not overgrown. It's not wild. It's just so poetic, so poetic, so beautiful. Together with the trees, you know, big trees, small weeds, small grass, little shrubs here and there. Oh, I couldn't wish for a better garden, right in front of my tent. And I told them that when I came back, they destroyed everything. They plant grass, you know, orderly, and some uh, little flower here and there. <laughs> Ah, oh, and what a tiger face I had, but <laughs> too late, you know, I can't say much. And up to now, I still have that picture in my mind, the perfection of nature, and I can only keep that in my heart. Yeah, it's, I say, you don't live there. It's I who have to live there. Whatever I like it is my place. Why don't you plant yours, your place? You have your own cave. You plant it in front of your cave. You don't mess up with my cave. It's some egos. And I deal with ego all the time, ever since. All the time. Not just that, but before that, after that, and still now. <laughs> Either ego or dumb or dumber. <laughs> so I very much sympathize with our Lord, <laughs> God. I also couldn't understand, let alone God, you know. I say, oh, you cannot understand human. Even I, in a human form, I can't understand them. How, how, about you? how would you, you know? <laughs> this is the thing. Okay, now we have another story. I say it's not so bad, but just to erase this, just to erase this memory. That <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, where was 
is a story. Mm. <laughs> this is a little bit uh, mundane, so I choose some good one, okay? Mm. <coughs> it's about a wedding. Mm. You know, a, a little girl uh, attend uh, a wedding for the first time mm. in her life. A little girl. And then she was asking her mother, Mom, this I <laughs> Mom, they, they, they're taking my photo on this side, so I <laughs> Whenever I turn, you don't take photo. <laughs> I have some trouble with her. The little girl whispered to the mom, a mother, and said, Mom, how come the bride dressed in white? So mother said, yeah, because white is a color of happiness, and today is the happiest day of her life. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only happiest day of her life. <laughs> I think, I think, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> After that is another story. We don't want, we don't want to to, <laughs> to tell here. It's too long. <laughs> Everybody knows already anyway, so it's, it's boring to, to repeat. Okay, right. So because today is the happiest day of her life, life, and white is the color of happiness. So the child thought about this for a while, for a moment, and then asked again, So why is the groom wearing black? <laughs> I think the groom knew in advance. <laughs> <laughs> from now on, <laughs> from that day on, uh, prepare, you know. Okay, this is so fun. But how come everybody knows and everybody got married? Huh? Why, why? Are, you, are your marriage happy? Mine was happy. Yeah, I don't mind marrying again. Yeah, because mine was very happy. Yours? Yours? No, sorry. No, no, no? Some? Yes, not married? Okay. No, I don't want to marry again with that husband, not not with anybody else. <laughs> I don't think it will be the same. Okay. The children. This is uh, another story, okay? About children and God. The children will line up in the cafeteria of a Catholic ele elementary school for lunch. Mm. At the At one end of the table... There was a large pile of apples, and the nun had posted a note on the apple tray saying, Take one only. <laughs> South Amelia. <laughs> yeah. Take one only. God is watching. That's a note that she wrote. And, they, and then the children moving further along the lunch line at the other end of the table was a large pile of chocolate chips cookies. So a, a little child had written a note or put on there and say, Take all you want. God is watching the apples only. <laughs> children, huh? Children. Children, cute, cute. Yeah. <laughs> and the child is... Um, a little boy opened the big family Bible and uh, was reading. He was fascinated as he, you know, turning pages. Suddenly something fell out of the Bible. He picked it up and looked at it. What he saw was an old leaf that has been pressed in between the pages. Mama, look what I found. So the mama said, What have you got there? He say, he, he was very astonished and say, Ma, I think it's Adam's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Possible, yeah? <laughs> In the old day, that's what they use. Yeah, no, not all day. <laughs> In Adam's time, oh, yeah. they don't use anything. 
just one lid you to cover where, you know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I was thinking to let the three of them sit here. Because when they sit there, they don't see me at all. They hardly see me because they've been out all day. Come here, the three of you. The three <laughs> pillars. Three pillars of the Zen. We can see you actually, yeah? You can? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you can sit on the bed, three of you, if you want. It's okay? Really? Oh, I forgot the candy. <laughs> candy back on this side. Okay, there's another story. Saying grace before meals. You know what that means? It's like before you eat, you say, thank you, God, Buddha, Master, whatever, huh? Uh. So this is Sunday school. The teacher asks ask, uh, one of the kids, Johnny, now, tell me frankly, do you say prayers before eating? No, sir. <laughs> Little Johnny replies, I don't have to. And the teacher was surprised. But you should. Why? Why not? He said, oh, my mom is a very good cook. <laughs> we don't have to pray for the meal tastes good. <clears throat> okay. Long story. <clears throat> oh, maybe next time, huh? cannot keep joke forever. No, we read our serious story. Because <laughs> Buddha is watching. Iluminados televidentes, han estado viendo la maestra cuenta chistes e historias budistas, un monje llamado Joyas Celestiales, parte 1 de 2, en Entre Maestro y Discípulos. A continuación sigue el rey de las plegarias aspiracionales de las nobles actividades excelentes de Samantha Badra, en palabra de sabiduría. Que la providencia guíe sus vidas con amor y luz divina. Para más detalles, por favor visiten www.suprimastertv.com/bmd.